Good afternoon. The hip joint is a synovial ball joint and a socket joint with three degrees of freedom. Though we will be today focusing on the sagittal plane motion of flexion. In flexion, the axis of motion goes through the center of the femoral head. When measuring flexion, the patient brings their knee towards their chest by bending at the knee, either passively or actively. As the knee nears the chest, the gluteus maximus and the hamstrings both stretch. However, if the knee is bent, the hamstrings are no longer stretched. The posterior capsule of the joint also stretches as the hip flexes. The end feel of hip flexion measurement is soft as the tissues of the anterior thigh encounter the abdomen. In order to test active hip flexion, the patient must first start in a standing position, parallel to the table for support, with the upper leg exposed. The patient should have a neutral spine. Asking the patient to stand up straight and keep the shoulders back may be a good cue, along with asking the patient to stand up straight as if there was a string pulling them from the top of their head. When performing the measurement, the anatomical landmarks are as follows. The stationary arm of the goniometer bisects the pelvis. Move, the moving arm moves with the lateral side of the femur, which points down to the femoral condyle. The fulcrum is the greater trochanter. Ask the patient to raise their leg up toward their chest, maintaining the landmarks and looking for compensations palpating both the ASIS and PSIS. When the ASIS starts to move into your finger or the PSIS starts to move, the patient is no longer performing isolated hip flexion. To measure passive range of motion in hip flexion, the same test is performed but with the patient in a supine position. Flex the hip by lifting the thigh off the table. Allow the knee to flex passively during the motion to reduce tension in the hamstring muscles. Maintain the extremity in neutral rotation, neutral abduction, and neutral adduction throughout the motion. The end of the range of motion occurs when resistance to further motion is felt and attempts to overcome that resistance cause the pelvis to tilt. This is indicated by the PSIS going into your finger in the table. So um, I'm going to measure active range of motion first, and then I'll measure passive range of motion after. So if I can have you stand up next to the table, and then you can just use the table like this for support. Okay. And then I'm going to act actually ask you to take off your shirt so that I can see your hip bones. All right. And then I'm also going to lift your shorts like this. If you can hold on to them, that would be good. Okay. So what I'm going to have you do when you hold on to the table I'm going to ask you to raise your hip up to your, towards your chest like this. I'm expecting to see your knee come about hip level, maybe a little higher, but we can see where you're at. Okay. All right, so you can do that whenever you're ready. Measurements below expected for a particular patient in hip flexion could indicate several conditions. The gluteus maximus may be tight, limiting flexion range of motion. Certain joint surface abnormalities may also contribute while a tight posterior joint capsule will also limit hip flexion. Femoral acetabular impingement may also result in loss of flexion range of motion as the bony pinchers act as bony blocks for normal hip movement. The normal degrees you'd expect is 120 degrees. Is that good? Yep. Okay, now I'm gonna do passive with you. Mm -hmm. So if you could lay down on your back here, you can take your shoes off. Alright, then we're going to do the same thing, but I'm going to passively move your hip through this this time. I'm expecting to see the same thing, just see that your knee comes that level with your hip, maybe a little bit more. Mm -hmm. right. So I'm just going to feel for your ASIS and PSIS. Alright, that feels about end range. And that should be about the same, 120 degrees. 
And this concludes our educational video about active hip range of motion and passive range of motion. Chris? One would not want to measure hip flexion if the patient is under surgical precautions from your doctor, specifically prohibiting hip flexion, such as those for a posterior total hip replacement or a recent hip fracture. Severe pain in the hip would also contraindicate a patient for this measurement. Someone with orthostatic hypotension should be carefully monitored, and a therapist may decide to measure in supine for this patient.